Hello YouTubers, this is a very quick unboxing and review of the Radxa, Radaxa, Ragsa, I don't, I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. Uh, it's a all-in-one computer, sort of a contender to the Raspberry Pi. Different form factor, so it's different from the Banana Pi and others. Uh, but let's go on with the unboxing. So within the box itself is the first and foremost in front and centre so there's a, a space here for a, a small battery which will obviously do the real time clock or the hardware clock sorry two USB ports micro SD infrared micro USB button two IO rows and the other side we have Connector for power, it's PDF, HDMI, Ethernet, and a Wi Fi antenna. So, this is the Radaxa, Radxa, I don't want to pronounce it both. Okay. Also, within. Box. Your Wi Fi antenna and a USB power cable. Then is an acrylic case. For the Radaxa, it's from the logo and the name. So I'll build this up and see how it looks. And just like the, the Raspberry Pi case. I've shown a video before, the uh, acrylic is covered in a protective film which is easier than said and done to, to get apart so you get six parts in this case all together your sides, your top and your bottom now, the top looks pretty interesting it has a hole here and significantly smaller inserts at these sides versus this side now, that to me looks like it's going to be on a hinge so we'll see how that looks when I build up. As I said before, it is not a form factor compatible with the Raspberry Pi. So this is in the face here and just for your information it is just about just under 10 centimeters long 9.8 centimeters and Eight point one centimeters long. Oh yeah, including the and eight and a half centimeters, including the uh, the Wi-Fi aerial connector. So I'm going to build this case up and plug everything else in. Right, so that's everything all hooked up. I will now get a keyboard and mouse and plug it into a monitor and have a look and see what happens next. Now 
Right, well that's everything all uh, hooked up on the, the Raxa, Raxa, how we're going to pronounce it. Um, important thing to note is it requires a 2.5 amp power supply. Um, your normal Raspberry Pi uh, power supplies ain't going to cut it. They're normally rated for about 1 amp or 1.5 amp. Um, I've used a iPad fast charger, um, which says it gives out 2.5 amps, so it should be more than enough to, to power this. Um, I was right, it was on a hinge, um, and the battery holder in there, I'm just going to pop in a 12-20 battery just now. Close it over. Now, there's no instructions uh, with this. It didn't come with any instructions. The website says it's ready to go as soon as you plug it in and, and get it going. So, it's hooked up to this HDMI monitor. I'll show you in a second. And I'm just very quickly going to plug it in and pan the camera up. I've got my spare keyboard and mouse hooked up. So, as the website says, I've got one red light. Blue and green. And that's it now booted up. Now I believe it boots into Android uh, to begin with. It comes with Android and Ubuntu if I'm not mistaken. Um, it will boot up into one of those two. All I'm looking to do is just make sure that it works. Keyboard and mouse works and the Wi-Fi works. And then uh, we'll do some further testing after that. So the boot logo for the Radaxa. And as you can see, it's Android. Um, the mouse I have, the mouse is working the keyboard is also working I'll get a message up on my screen just now that's just relating to the the resolution um, that Rad Access putting out I will deal with that later on um, let's have a look and get into settings Say just in the wrong password. This sort of just works like any any phone now. Um, it just got a really big display. So connected. And what I've done there is just change the resolution from it. Uh, from 1280 by 720 to 1920 by 1080 uh, taking it from a 720p display to a 1080 uh, p display uh, I'll just make sure everything else screen seal is obviously a what's more commonly known as overscan settings I believe with the Raspberry Pi uh, and all it says is just takes the screen and make sure it reaches all the edges so that's it now, let's uh, get a quick look Google for the Radaxa rock and let's see if the, the internet connection is working or not. It says it's connected fine to my home network, uh, whether or not it is, we'll find out and it is, so that's us. hooked up and ready to go. What I'll do it very quickly is just to see how fast this is in Wi-Fi because it doesn't seem like it's the fastest. And there is a Laraxa Rock. So this is the specs of a device that I've got here just now. It's a quad core ARM process with two gigabits of RAM. It says it comes up dual boot for Android and Ubuntu. Um, I haven't played about that yet. You've you've seen the first boot of it, and it says it's open open source. So this is the uh, the fact I've just done is a a boot up unboxing boot up video. Um, bits of news on the website there. There is a 
lot of photos on here if you want to have a better view of it. But there's also a wiki uh, where you'll get a lot of helpful information about an Axa Rock. Uh, I don't know, if, I'm not going to be able to download this app. I, um, I'm not going to set up my account for Android just now. Uh, but what I will do is, I did see a Wi Fi display. Let's see what this is. Not entirely sure what it is, I'll have a look about later on. Um, I appreciate this video is now running just a wee bit on, but this is the, the basic uh, home screen if you like for it. Obviously that's your, your boot Ubuntu sign up there, so that's how we boot into Ubuntu, which we'll do in a couple of seconds. Your normal ad stock Android apps, calculator, calendar, Chrome, clock, uh, download Gmail, gallery, Gmail, Google Maps, music, people, play store, settings, uh, sound recorder, talk, uh, voice search. A couple of uh, non-standard apps in there. Um, DS File Explorer, you've also got the RK Games Console, uh, the Dev Tools, which isn't part of a normal normal install, along with Super Su. Um, obviously to enable you to do uh, things with root access or super user access on the, the Android side of things. Quick looking Dev Tools. And a couple of snippets in there if you like and this will obviously just aid in showing off the the hardware uh, again this is the first boot with it so I don't really know what I'm playing about with here I'm just hitting buttons and hoping for the best some things will work some things won't uh, Right, so I'm now going to give it a little bash and boot into Ubuntu. No maps. And see how that goes. So this is the, the first option for the super user. I've got five seconds left, so I'm going to have to very quickly grant it. But in short, it's looking for super user, super user permissions to do something with the file system or with the device which it doesn't normally have permissions to do. Uh, one of these is obviously reboot into Ubuntu. So hit OK and we'll see what happens. You know, just normally the up strings you can normally get when it comes to hey, a Ubuntu or any type of Linux distribution. And that's us up. Uh, using the desktop LXDE. This actually seems pretty snappy. Uh, I haven't connected to Wi Fi on this yet because this is a different um, operating system that started up really quick later. Uh, again, I'll connect to wireless network. I told for this I'll need to get the, the actual password for the Rather X itself, which I don't have, but I'll very quickly jump on the wiki and see what it says. Right, it seems I went to my password a couple of times uh, and I broke it. Um, I am now connected to my Wi Fi network. I done that by clicking the, the LHDE button, preferences, network connections. It asked me for my password. I typed the correct password this time that I got from the wiki. You can then edit the connection I'd attempted to before. Uh, I'll type this again, it's R-O-C-K. 
Uh, this lets you go in and edit and change the Wi-Fi settings, including typing in your password. Uh, done that. Hit connect, and that was it. Let me connect. So let's make sure that this works. And again, bottom right hand corner, you can see that it's uh, starting to transfer data. So it is transferring data. A little bit slower in the network than what I'd like to be honest with you, but it is connected. It's a pretty good. <laughs> Pretty fast desktop for a, a very very small computer, uh, and again I don't think the speed test will work. But I will give it a bash. You can see my my type is terrible. That's why <laughs> the password went wrong a couple of times. Okay, so I require Flash um, and JavaScript, and it's saying it recommends Google Chrome. I'm going to see if Chromium's available because I do know there's a package manager here. Uh, System tools, Synaptic Package Manager. I'll type in rock again. <clears throat> now I'm going to do is very quickly type in Chromium. And see if that is in this repository. Again, I'm not entirely sure about the repository that it uses, it may be a, a custom one and this one is Chromium Browser is already installed, so Internet and <laughs> Chromium Browser And while I'm in here, I'll have a quick look at the repositories uh, It uses Linaro based on Rering So let's see if speed test works in Google Chrome. That'd be a no. Right, that's the uh, Racks of Rock. Uh, all hooked up, all working. I'm happy with that. It's a pretty fast and snappy little machine. Um, obviously, take a lot more playing about with to see how it really works. I'll get to see if there's any updated images in anything for it. Um, Okay, updated operating system, sorry, see if I can make it run a little bit quicker. Uh, internet wise, again, I've not got an accurate speed on it yet. Plugging into Ethernet may make it work a little bit better as well. Um, again, it's just more playing about and testing and seeing how it actually works. Um, one very quick thing just before I, I switch it off um, the board that I have, the version is 0.1351, which was on the 25th of the 10th, 2013. Um, Again, all these revision details are available on the Raxa website. Uh, thank you very much for having a look at the video, and if you do decide to have one, let me know what you think.